We only have Ada, the sister. Oh. Well, the sister likes some more champagne. Oh, the sister is allowed to speak. She thinks this lunch is purely social. <laughs> the sister is here because there's sickness in the family. Thomas wanted someone from the Shelby organization to introduce Mr. Nelson to you and to offer all three of you an invitation. Ooh. What invitation? The invitation can wait. And please remember that in this moment, in this room, it is the Shelby family that holds the power because we have the information and the incentives that will make Mr. Nelson do what you require him to do. So when I speak, please keep your fucking mouths closed because although I'm reluctant, I am actually quite good at this. And yes, I will have champagne. Ah. Take care of this. Okay, so before these dull introductions begin, I just have to tell you something that my niece Gina just told me. Oh, Jack. She said the Shelby family are all witches and sorcerers who speak freely with the dead, so who he is a Shelby. Is it true? Hmm. Gina? Hello, Ada. Michael sends his regards. You're the sister. Yes, it seems I am indeed the sister. I did some research. You're communist once, but diamonds and lipstick now. Actually, I'm a socialist. She's Mr. Shelby's political advisor. And you, you're the future prime minister of Great Britain and its dominions. Indeed I am. And you, Lady Diana Mitford. Talk of London with her amphetamines and emeralds. <laughs> it's her sharp mind that I'm in love with. Men bore me. Ada, do you have a man? My husband died. But of course, we speak often. Between this sparkling conversation, could I get a drink of some kind? So this little kid, Gina, she runs out. She marries a gangster. And now here we all are. Oh, Jack, please, you're so blunt. Yes, it's wonderful. A man who is not careful with his words. I'm not careful. Just say it first and then clear up the broken glass with my bare hands. Well, I don't seem to have a drink either. Well, I have scotch or Irish. Thomas drinks Irish. Where the hell is he? Irish. He's been unavoidably detained. Nothing's unavoidable. His daughter is unwell. He doesn't have a wife? You know, I did some research on you too, Mr. Nelson. Ada here is the smart one of the family. I learned that when you were young, you lost a brother and a sister to consumption. No ice? Well, that same awful illness has entered our family. And you see, Thomas has very little faith in current medical practices regarding tuberculosis. Man, he has that right. He's gone off in search of alternative approaches to curing the disease. Experimental work that he hopes will save the life of his daughter. In his shoes, I would do the same thing. Your brother intrigues me. Yes. He often has that effect on people. Yes, and my future husband has that effect on 20 million people in this country who attend his rallies and listen to his broadcasts. It's amazing what English upper-class women can do with just skin, bone, and arrogance. My brother sends his apologies for not being here and would like to invite all of you to his home for a meeting, a meeting where the real business will be done and where you can meet like minds from Ireland who would also like to discuss the future of Europe. But as you say, this lunch is purely social. And looking at my glass, I see I still don't have champagne. Michael told me the sister had gone straight. Yes, but her brother is the sun. The rest just orbit around him. Gina tells me lots of things, but I want to hear it from you, Ada. What exactly does the Shelby Company Limited do? 